Princess. Yes, Miss. You forgot the flowers. I'm just going to pick them up now, Miss Lewis. Chrysus. Yes, Miss. Never mind the flowers. I'll get them later. No, not now. Bob, Mr. Terry gets here. Yes, Miss. Say, Lois, I forgot to tell you I invited that young Terry fellow out to dinner. Yes, I know. You know? Yes, he told me. I dropped in his office when I was up to see you. Oh, so that's the reason for all this commotion. <laughs> the way you're fussing around, one would think you were going to try to make an impression. Well, why shouldn't I? Didn't you tell me he was one of the brightest young men in the company? <laughs> Besides, I think he's nice. Yes, of course, of course. He's a very nice young man. <laughs> you Mr. Bob, ain't you? Yeah, thanks. Well, don't you think you'd better go welcome him? Why, yes, I... I think I should. Hello, Bob. Oh, hello. Come in the living room. Father's in there. Oh. Hello, Bob. How do you do, sir? Would you sit down? Thanks. My, it's a lovely home. You must be very happy here. Yes, I am. And as the years go by, the old walls and things grow warmer. They seem to caress and comfort. Now, I like that. He always told me it was my caresses that made him happy. <laughs> Dad always goes poetic when he talks about the house. You'd better change the subject or he'll begin to sing about it. <laughs> no, I mean really sing. He'll sing Home on the Range or Home Sweet Home. Home on the Range? Have you ever heard me sing, but never mind. <laughs> you have a cigar. Well, no, no, thanks very much. Well, a cigarette. Oh, yeah. I thought it was a cube hat. <laughs> well, by the way, Bob, what was that idea you wanted to tell me about? You said it was a new sales angle. Well, it's not exactly in my department, but if you don't mind me talking shop. Go ahead, young man. As a matter of fact, young dreams are romantic to me. They remind me of my own when I was starting out. See, I bet you worked hard to make yours come true. Well, some of them did pan out. And so will yours if you work hard and stick to it. Well, I've given this one a lot of time and thought, if that'll help any. My idea, Mr. Borden, is a pretty radical departure in modern home construction. I've designed a structural framework for roof, wall, and floor joists made entirely of steel bars, interwoven and welded into a single unit. It's met every test for weight and stress and, oh, should have perfect resistance to fires, earthquakes, storms, or anything. Well, you could make the walls as thick as you like, which would add to the insulation value. And it should cost very little additional. Well, there's still a minor problem. A fire breaks inside the walls, but Mr. O'Donnell assured me that a sheet metal break would add very little to the cost. Oh, has O'Donnell been working with you on this? Yes, sir. He checked my figures as to cost. Why? Well, we're letting O'Donnell go. He came to work intoxicated. But he has such a good record. Why, he's been with you so long. Yes, he's a very valuable man. But he broke one of the definite rules of the company. I believe the rules are made to be kept. You mean you're not going to give him a second chance? According to my principles of discipline and organization, there is no second chance. The men that work for me know that. I see. Remember that, young man. Then you want me to pick them after all? Shh. I'll get them myself. No, Croesus, you're much too busy. Would you like to help me cut some flowers for the table? Oh, yes, I'd like to. Uh, if uh, you'll excuse me. I'm afraid you'll have to, whether I excuse you or not. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, what's the matter with you, Chris? He talks just like you did when you were the boy. Oh, oh, thank you, Chris. You mean he's a fine, intelligent young man. Yeah, that is very intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, this is swell. Look. Well, this town has certainly grown. Your father had a lot to do with it, too. He's a great man. He thinks you're going to be a great man, too. Hey, did he say that? Mm-hmm. And father's usually right. Oh, I certainly hope I live up to his expectation. You will. You have nice hands. Well, have we picked enough flowers? No, we'd better get some more. Uh, Bob. Yeah? Mr. Borden would like to see you in the office at once. Oh, thanks, Steve. What is it, Johnson? Uh, why, uh, Bob's accounts are $5,000 short. Mr. Borden, I didn't take that money. After examining all the evidence, I wish I could believe that. But I can't. However, you'll have the opportunity of proving it to a jury. You mean you're going to turn me over the... It's pretty difficult for me to do this in your case, Bob. But I have no choice. But I can't believe that you... Well, it just doesn't seem possible. That's all I have to say, Rob. Hear ye, hear ye. This court is now in session. All persons having business before the court, give heed and ye shall be heard. Be seated. Yes, he was entrusted with the money. It is the duty of this jury to see that the laws of this land are enforced. Gentlemen of the jury, I charge you that if in your opinion the prosecution has proved its case beyond a reasonable doubt, your verdict should be guilty. We find the defendant, Robert Terry, guilty of embezzlement as charged in the indictment. How could you do this? I always thought you were so fair. Father, you've always been right about everything. But I'm sure you've made a mistake. I know he's innocent. I'm sorry, dear. I believe I've done my duty. something. Well, it looks like you and me are going to see a lot of each other. My name's Todd Shannon. What's yours? Uh, mine's Bob Terry. Glad to know you, Bob. Yep, 
Looks like you and me are going to be buddies. Ain't much we can do about it. <laughs> no, sir. This your first visit with us? Yes. You too? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is my home. Well, here's your boudoir. Just make yourself right at home. If there's any little thing you need, why, just ring for it. <laughs> Really a good job, I do say it myself. Yes, sir. Oh. Say, I just had to think about something. This is my anniversary. I've been in here ten years today. I can get my parole now. <sighs> ten long years. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was. Thinking of the ten years I still got to go. And the five years I've been in this place. Five years he took out of my life. More like 5,000 years. Just because his ideas of justice demanded a victim. Yeah, I know, kid. You sure got a raw deal. But you'll get out. And when you do, we're going to have a lot of fun paying old Borden off. I hope he lives long enough. I'll make him pay for every minute I've been in this place. Why, he swore my life away the day he took that stand. I had this all future all planned out for myself. Steel frames for buildings. Steel bars interwoven. Steel bars. Steel bars. I'll be getting my parole soon, kid. And when I do, I'll take care of them for you. Say, you know there's a lot of ways that nobody could tell who did it. Now, you take them A-Rab fellers. Now, they just sneak up behind a guy, see? With a long piece of silk cord in their hand with a fancy knot tied in it. Sling it over a guy's head, give it a quick twist, and go, 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 and nobody knows who did it. <laughs> of course, then there's the way I see the fella do it. He just sneak, took these long uh, poison toothpicks, see? Shoved them underneath the guy's fingernails, and... <laughs> well, uh, then there's a way that, uh, uh, the old-fashioned method, too, you know, uh, providing you can catch a guy asleep. <laughs> you can imagine how he must have suffered, Harry. And he didn't deserve it. He was innocent. I can well understand how bitter he must feel toward me. Very likely, John, but I've known Bob all his life, and I believe he listened to me. Yes, it might help if you could convince him how sincerely I regret. Father, have you seen the papers? Bob will be free. Yes, dear. How do you do, Dr. Nichols? How are you, my child? We were just discussing it, Lois. Well, aren't you glad? Of course I'm glad he's getting out.
It's a horrible thing for me to realize that I'm directly responsible for all he's been through. Oh, but you're not, Father. You only did what you thought was right. After all, it was a jury that convicted him. Just the same, he spent five terrible years in prison for something he didn't do. And I consider myself responsible. I'm going to do everything in my power, Harry, to make it up to him. Everything. Your father thought I could go to Bob and perhaps make him understand. Oh, I think he will understand. Bob was always very fair. I'm sure he'll realize you only did what you thought was just. The name of justice. Justice. <laughs> There's irony for you. What have you planned to do? I am going to the prison and have a talk with him. Hey, put the deuce up there. Ah. Hello, Bob. I'm glad to hear the good news. Well, so am I. I've come to talk to you, Bob. Have you made any plans? Oh, one or two. That's fine. Bob, there's a chance of you taking up your life again just where you left off. What do you mean? Mr. Borden feels terrible about what he did to you, and he wants to make restitution. Well, if that's what you came here for, you can quit talking right now. I know how you must have suffered, but don't let bitterness and hate warp your heart and soul. Don't you think you should give thanks that all misunderstanding has been cleared away? <laughs> Me give thanks? <laughs> that's a good one. Listen, I've had to live in this hole for five years and give the best part of my life for another guy's crime. And you mention the word thanks. If you harbor malice and vengeance, Bob, your lot will be harder. Blessed are those who look upon the sins of others with compassion and forgiveness. Uh, I don't go for that stuff anymore. Bob, you're going out into the world again, and you will need spiritual strength to help you to become readjusted to the new life. You will need friendship and kindness and understanding. Mr. Borden is offering all these. He wants you to come and live in his home. He'll do everything in the world to repay you. Shut up. I don't want to hear any more. And you can get out. Uh, pardon me, mister. Will you let me talk to my buddy alone for a minute, please? Of course. What a sap you are. Why, it's a perfect setup. Did you hear what the guy just said? Well, what could be sweeter? He's giving it to you on a silver platter. He's asking you to come and live at the old man's house. And you'll have him right in the palm of your hands when you get ready to squeeze. See? Yeah. Say, that is an idea. And being on a spot, I could give him a dose of his own medicine, huh? Sure. Now, uh, I'm living there. That'd go against the grain. Uh, never mind the grain. Hey, Chief. So what do you call them guys? Why, uh... After talking to my buddy here, I, I think maybe your plan is the best thing for me. That's fine, Bob. Are you ready, Terry? Yeah, just a minute. I'll wait for you. Okay. Say, that was a swell act you put on just now. You gotta keep it up, see? You gotta be nice to everybody you meet, all the time. Keep it up. And say, I'm getting my parole Friday, and as soon as I do, I'm gonna look you up. I want to get in on this. And remember, I know the ropes, see? And besides that, I got plenty of connections that can do us a lot of good in a big way. Right in your town, Palsy. <laughs> Don, you've been a swell pal. <laughs> oh, cut it out. <laughs> Goodbye, guy. So long, pal. And say, don't stay out late nights or catch cold. Don't get your feet wet. And say, give the old man a <laughs> for me, will you? <laughs> hasn't been exactly what you'd call a happy prisoner. I can well understand that, Warden. Hello, Bob. Hello, Mr. Borden. Will you shake hands with me? Sure. I don't think it's necessary, Bob, for me to tell you how I feel about this. 
I'll never be able to forgive myself. But I want you to know that both Lois and I will do everything in our power to make it up to you. We'd like to have you come and live with us, make our home your home, for the time being at least. Will you try it? Yeah, I'll try. Yes, miss. They're here. Hello, Bob. Mr. Bob. Mr. Bob. Oh, how are you, Precious? Well, fine, just fine, Mr. Bob, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, Lois, uh, Bob has agreed to come here and live with us. Oh, I'm so glad. I do hope you'll be happy here. Thanks. You must be tired after your long drive. Oh, mm, not especially. Perhaps you'd like to go up to your room and fix up a bit. Croesus will take you up when you're ready. I would like to go, thanks. If you'll excuse me. Don't fix up too much. Dinner will be ready soon. Father, what have they done to him? Too much, my dear. He seems so bitter. Yes, he is. But we've got to break that down. It isn't going to be an easy task. Still, he's accepting your offer. Yes, that's true. He is. Father, I'm going to admit something to you. I've always liked Bob a lot. But he never could see me. I was all prepared to pity him when you brought him home. But when I saw him, it wasn't pity. But a strange, deep sympathy I've never known before. He doesn't want pity. What he most needs is encouragement and understanding. We've got to make this a real home for him, Lois. And above all, those last five years must be a closed book. Remember that. More coffee, Bob? No, thanks. It was very good. Everything was. Have you any plans for this evening, Lois? No, not unless Bob wants to go to a movie. No, not tonight, thanks. If you'll pardon me, I must go and speak to Croesus about tomorrow's marketing. I'll be right back, Bob. It's more comfortable in the library, Bob. Let's go in there. Oh, by the way, how do you like that? I just picked it up. To tell you the truth, Bob, I'm afraid I got stung. What do you think? I don't know much about him, Mr. Borden. Say, I've got some new books I think will interest you. <laughs> You'll need something around here to pass the time away. Now, let me see. Oh, yes, here it is. <laughs> what do you think of that? Oh, yes, I've heard about this. I wanted to read it. Wait a minute, there's another one. Let me see. Oh, yes. Say, there's a lot of new things around here I want to show you. Say, Bob, I actually read this one myself. Hmm. Say, this is a new development. Well, there's a million things they can do with this. Well, I've already started doing things with it around here. Look at this. It's a photoelectric cell arrangement. If anyone passes the light rays that go across here, say, the police and everybody in town would know about it. What's it for? It's to protect the safe. It's a good idea, isn't it? This switch turns the rays on and... Now here, here's the safe, Bob. How's that? It's all right. Say, they're opening gates and garage doors with it. They'll soon be landing airplanes with it. Oh, by the way, Bob, you'll be needing some new clothes and things now. I always carry a little cash on hand in there. You just help yourself whenever you need it. I don't like to do that, Mr. Borden. Nonsense, my boy. Forget it. And later on, when you're ready, I'd like to over some plans I have in mind for your future with our company. Oh, well, wait a minute. I'll get to the combination for the safe. And, uh, where have you been employed the last few years? I 
I'm sorry, Mr. Terry. I read all about your case, and I think you've been done a terrible injustice. But it's against our rules to employ a man with a prison record. Hello, Bob. Have a nice day. No. No luck. No? Well, I guess I shouldn't have expected any. Oh, oh Bob. I've persuaded the directors to give you that cashier's job whenever you're ready. Is that so? Yes, sir. Someone to see you, Mr. Bob. Who is it, another reporter? Don't look much like a reporter. Said his name was Mr. Shannon. Oh, well, that must be Todd. Not yet. Gee, that's great. I'm sure glad you waited for me. Well, what have you been doing? Looking for a job. A job? Well, I, I didn't want to... Well, uh, I thought it'd be better for our plans. Oh, I get you. An alibi. Yeah. Well, you don't have to worry about me, kid. I can always go back to work for Carmody. And say, I think I can fix you up with him, too. Well, say, could we go see him now? Sure. Anytime. Bob, why don't you ask your friend to come inside? <laughs> Thanks, miss, but I've been inside too much lately. <laughs> Lois, this is Todd Shannon. Uh, Todd, this is Miss Borden. How do you do? I'm glad to know you, Miss Borden. I'm going to get my hat. I'll be right back, Todd. Okay. I'm so glad you came. Bob told me what a pal you were, and he certainly needs someone to cheer him up. It don't look to me like anybody would need much cheering. I mean, <laughs> if you were around him, <laughs> uh, does he see you much? Just as much and as often as I can make him see me. Well, maybe he needs specs. <laughs> <laughs> you must get Bob to bring you around often. I think I'm going to like you just as much as he does. Well, I'm sure glad about me coming here, Miss Borden. Thanks. How about just calling me Lois? Yeah. I like that better, Miss Borden. <laughs> so long, Lois. So long, Bob. Goodbye, Mr. Shannon. Hey, boy, that sure is a swell dish. Here's your receipt, Jim. And yours, Ed. And yours, Oscar. Gentlemen, I want to thank you for your confidence in me. With this quarter of a million behind us, our credit will be reestablished. I hope so, John. This hundred thousand is as far as I can go. Oh, stop crying, Jonas. I've already put in every nickel I had. Hello, Dad. Hello, darling. Everything go well? Yes. They all came through. And would you believe it, Jonas came to the rescue with a hundred thousand. But you should have heard him cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you bring the bonds home? Yes, I, I let the time slip by until it was too late to get into the bank. Creatures! Oh, have you seen Croesus? My gold Croesus. I'll tie it for you. Thanks. You look more like the 400 than man going to work. Well, I hope it helps work the 400. <laughs> I admire your self-reliance, Bob. I think your new position is splendid. So do I. I've known some very distinguished head waiters. Name me one. Well, the Spritz of the Ritz. I understand he makes a trip to Europe every year. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, and I'll get my wraps and drop you off. Father would take you, but he's not going to the club till 9.30. Oh, well, fine. Is Mr. Perry here? Yes, he'll be here in just a minute.
Uh, just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, if you please, with your indulgence, I've just had a request. What? To leave town? Yeah, no, it's quite all right. Very fun. No, no, not exactly, I, but I'm glad that you're joining in the fun, have a good time, it's quite all right. I have a request, really, to uh, give an imitation I had the pleasure of doing over the radio several nights ago. And I'm sure you'll guess what it is. It's an old-fashioned musical instrument, and uh, I shall ha now, Jolly, will have a go at it. Yes, carry on, carry on. That's quite all right. I'm passionate about it, old boy. Here we go. <laughs> Remember, one jack ass at a time, if you don't mind. <laughs> All right, Big L. Yeah, big L. <laughs> yes. I say, have you any more? I, uh, I have another one. Well, carry on. I'll be very patient. Well, I hope you will be, if you don't mind. But by the way, if you insist, if you'd like to, I'd like you personally to guess what I'm trying to do. Oh, I don't know. Guess you really. Well, well, you're quite a doter, aren't you? Yes, now, I don't tell him, ladies and gentlemen. We'll let him guess for himself. Now, here we go. Remember, you're guessing. Oh, yes, yes, I'm here. <laughs> You are facetious. I wish you'd keep quiet. <laughs> uh, next imitation will be that of music. Not an ordinary mouth organ, an impression of an English boy. I play on the harmonica. Never mind, I'm not going to ask you. Please, if you let me have a go at this, and I shall play for you. Short sure draw on business. Another party just asked for you. It's that party over at table eight. They look like big money. Oh, thanks. Well, good evening. Oh, hello, Bob. Bob, I want you to meet some friends of mine. Rita, this is Bob Terry. Rita Milan, Bob. Mr. Marlowe, Mr. Terry. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Clifton, Mr. Terry. How do you do? How do you do? Is uh, everything all right? Yes, thank you. This is my boss, Mr. Carmody, uh, Miss Borden. How do you do? Miss Borden, it's a pleasure. Very nice place you have here. Thank you. Mr. Carmody, would there be any rule against my dancing with Mr. Terry? There aren't any rules that wouldn't favor such a charming young lady. Sure, go ahead, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Pardon me, please. with a head waiter. Oh, don't be a snob, Freddie. I'd like to be in her shoes. That's Bob Terry. Don't mind then, Bob. You're free, white, and 21. I wish I could feel like that. Oh, laugh at things, Bob. Come out in the sun. Go get Terry. So you mucked it. 
I had a couple of guys take down his bank, but he never showed up, and then Smitty told me he left his office after banking hours. All right. Clear out before Terry gets here. Excuse me, please. Certainly. Yes, love. How long have you known him? Ever since I was a little girl. Why, hello, Todd. Hello, Miss Lois. Uh, I just couldn't resist telling you how nice you looked out there dancing. You just seemed to float around like smoke. Why, Todd, what a pretty speech. I didn't know you were a poet. Did I say a poem? <laughs> I must have got it from Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like Bob much, do you? No. Do you? Can you keep a secret? You know darn well I can. Well, I hate him. Just like you do. <laughs> <laughs> He's a pretty lucky guy, but he doesn't seem to realize it. I'd do anything in the world to straighten him out. Yeah, I understand, Miss Lois. Uh, pardon me. <laughs> you wanted me? Yes. Sit down, Bob. Looks like you're going to bring me in a lot of business. And I want to reciprocate. I got a swanky apartment house. And I want you to move into it. Won't cost you anything. Well, that's mighty nice, but I'm not ready to move just yet. No? What is it? The girl? <laughs> well, she hasn't anything to do with it. Okay, Terry, let's quit sparring and get down to business. Todd told me why you was living up there. How would you like to take a crack at Borden? Well, that's all I've been waiting for. Okay. $250,000 worth of negotiable bonds were turned over to the old man today. And he didn't put them into his bank. Now, suppose we could locate those bonds and something would happen to him tonight so that he couldn't get them into the bank tomorrow morning. I get you. No. They'd suspect me and I'd be sent up again. But you don't do the job. You stay right here. With all those people around you. Including Borden's daughter. Hmm. Say, Borden left the house at 9.30 tonight. While I was working here. You're not taking any chance. If he couldn't prove a theft, He'd be in the same spot I was. Why, he'd be indicted for... for embezzlement. Hmm. Here. That's the combination of the safe. The bonds are there. Yeah? Oh, and... Uh, here's the key to the front door. Oh, that makes it easy. I'll take care of you. No, I don't want any cut. I just want to watch him squirm. Listen. Look. The safe is right there. But it's electrified. And the switch that turns the current off and the lights on is down this side of the wall, right there. Waiter. Yes, sir. My check. You're very impertinent. You know, I think you got something there. Say, can you imagine that? After all the service I give that guy, he turns out to be a stiff. Say, I uh, hope everything goes off all right tonight. Don't worry, the chief knows his potatoes. He ain't never slipped up yet.
Oh, Bob, why did you do it? Father? Oh, hello, dear. What are you doing up so late? Oh, I wasn't tired. Now, you run along to bed. I want to talk to Bob. I had a grand time at Bob's place, but I'm dead. Good night, Bob. Don't let him keep you up too late. Good night, darling. Good night, dear. Does she know? Know what? Never mind. First, I want to assure you that whatever happens, I'm not going to let your name be brought into this. I told you I was willing to pay any way you liked, and I meant it. Naturally, I will be charged with embezzlement for the loss of those bonds. Yeah, that's what I figured. I hope you haven't made any mistake and left evidence that might be uncovered in the investigation. Don't worry. You were an honest man when you went to prison, Bob. So whatever you are now and whatever you do now is not your responsibility. It's mine. I had hoped that you might believe that I sincerely wanted to make amends to you for my mistake. Well, you didn't believe me. I can't blame you for that. I didn't believe you once. Listen, talking won't change things. There's just one thing I want you to promise me, that you'll see this thing through. I'll see it through. I've been waiting years for this. Bored and I didn't come here in the first place because I was fond of you, or believed your little scheme about wanting to atone for what you did to me. I came here to find out what would hurt you the worst. Well, I found out. Now you're going up for the same thing I did. And in your opinion, that will square our account? I'm glad. Thanks, Bob. Well, we'll see. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Lois. Where's Bob? Did he ever sleep? No, he had to leave early. You know, I think he's going to be much happier with his new job. Well, what's the matter with you? Lois, dear, something has happened. There's no chance of my sparing you this, so I might as well tell you. Those bonds that were in my safe are missing. How awful. Bob! Everyone will suspect him. Did you tell him how to open the safe? I never told anybody but you. But it couldn't have been Bob. He was at the club all evening. All evening? Yes. Well, my dear, whatever happens, I want you to stick to that. Did you call the police? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, they, they were here last night. What did they say? They don't believe that it was robbery. There's no signs of breaking in. What will your board of directors say? They'll probably accuse me of taking them. Oh, but they can't. How could those men who've worked with you for so long be so heartless? I couldn't blame them for that. After all, those bonds were entrusted to me to be deposited in the bank. And I can't produce them. Well, I'm in your hands, gentlemen. Where are the bonds, Borden? I don't know. You're quite sure? Well, a quarter of a million dollars worth of bonds couldn't just get up and walk out of an electrified safe. If you're insinuating that Terry did it just because you believe that anyone who has served time in prison must come out a criminal, you're wrong. Lois and I are the only ones who knew how to get into that safe. Well, that eliminates the possibility of robbery then, doesn't it? Look here, Merriweather. You're not accusing Borden I'm not of... accusing him of anything. Well, the way you spoke... I'm entitled to speak any way I wish. One hundred thousand dollars of that money is mine. And I reserve the right to question, as I please, the man who admits his criminal negligence. Well, we all know that Borden is honest. That's what he's counted on. His reputation for honesty. But it's easy enough to see... But that... Jonas! 
If you'll step out of the room for a few minutes, we'll take a vote on this. Certainly. Doing a stretch won't hurt him half as bad as losing his good reputation. <laughs> yeah. Just like you were when you were first sent up. I'll never forget it. You worried about your reputation. <laughs> Gee, what a green orange you were. <laughs> yeah, but the only trouble with you is, though, I think you're letting him off too easy. I think you should have choked him. Still, on the other hand, what about Miss Lois? It's going to hit her pretty hard. Ah, stop it. Do you think you can make me change my mind? All right. You wanted to get him, and you got him. You bet I got him. Well, gentlemen, we've talked this thing over, John, and we realize the temptation to save yourself from total ruin was overwhelming. We will give you precisely 24 hours to return those bonds, or the equivalent amount in cash. You know I have no cash, and I have no means of raising it. I'm sorry, John, but if you can't, we'll be forced to have you indicted. People against John Borden. I wish to offer as evidence this photograph of the electrified safe in which he claims he placed the bonds. You haven't the slightest suspicion that anyone else who had access to your safe might have taken the bonds. No, I haven't. In rendering your verdict, you may take into consideration the unexplained disappearance of the bonds entrusted to the defendant. Gentlemen of the jury, have you agreed on a verdict? We have. How say you, guilty or not guilty? We find the defendant, John Borden, guilty of embezzlement, as charged in the indictment. Dad. I love you so. But, John, can't you understand what this attitude of yours means? You're up for sentence this afternoon. There's no use telling me you haven't a clue as to who took those bonds. I know better. I'm sorry, Sam. I have nothing to say. Well, it's too bad, John. There's nothing more we can do without your cooperation. Goodbye. I'll see you this afternoon. Goodbye, Sam. And thank you. Sam, how's he taking it? Gritting his teeth like the Spartan he is and making the best of it. Oh, it's terrible. Isn't there anything we can do? There is, but he won't do it. Yes, he will. What is it? by putting the blame where it belongs, on Bob Terry. I was afraid you'd say that. You know, your father, out of a full sense of idealism, is going to the penitentiary without opening his mouth. Father, if Bob took those bonds and did that to you, do you think he's worthy of any consideration? My dear, you don't know what you're saying. Father, I'm going to ask you one question, and you must answer me. Yes? Did you lie about giving Bob the combination to the safe? Lois, my dear, go home, please. Your, your nerves are on end. You're in no condition to talk anymore about this. All right, Father. Good night, my dear. That's the end of his rope.
wonder how he feels about now. I remember a day just like this. Nearly six years ago. Only it was me that was sweating my heart out in that cell and praying to God for a break. Now he'll know how it feels to have half his life taken away from him. He'll know what prison and rotten food and gun towers and a million nights will do to a human being. He had it coming to him and he'll get it. I always said you'd get him in a spot. You were right. And you've been swell. There's just one thing, pal. You gonna bring her up again? Yeah, but she's such a swell name. This'll just about break her heart. She ain't never done nothing to you personally. Now, nah, quit it, will you? Hello, Miss Lois. Hello, Todd. Where's Bob? He just went down the locker room. Uh, Miss Lois, I'm awfully sorry about everything. Thanks, Todd. You're swell. It doesn't seem there's much a fella can do in a case like this. Todd, my father's getting old. He'll never live out his sentence. How do you suppose Bob's going to feel when he knows he sent a sweet old man to certain death? It'd be pretty awful. Do you think Bob had anything to do with it? Yes. I want Bob to be happy like he was before he went away. But he'll only be more miserable if he lets father go up. Yeah. I guess you're right. Thanks, Todd. You're sweet. I'm going to talk to Bob. Leaving? Yes, I'm checking out. Well, how are you? I guess I feel about like you do. I feel all right. There's no use trying to pretend. And there's no benefit of having lies between us. My father was convicted today. And he's not going to appeal the case. I think he's happy about it. Happy because he knows you're responsible for it. What have I got to do with it? You got what you wanted. Your scheme was perfect. My scheme? Don't try to pretend. We both know that you planned that robbery and how perfectly it worked. My father is going to the penitentiary for the same crime of which you were convicted. Well, it's done, isn't it? How do you expect to benefit for all those years to come, knowing just what he's going through? What do you expect to gain? Satisfaction. He'll know what it is to have hands like that. Hands that are scarred and twisted. And inside of them will get just the same way. Just like that hand. And if you've come here to ask me to help him, you're wasting your breath. I don't quite know why I've come here. Father feels that at last his conscience will be clear. And that he's paying the debt in the only way you want it paid. No, I haven't come here just to plead for him. I've come to plead for all of us. You especially. You can't change a thing. Bob, ever since I was a little girl, I've loved you. Loved you more than anything in life. More than anything, do you hear? All while you were in prison, I knew you were innocent. I cried and prayed every night for your freedom. I begged God to let me share part of your burden. Then when you were released, I thought my prayers had been answered. But you weren't free. Bob, if you go on like this, 
You'll always be imprisoned with bars of bitterness and hatred all around you. You'll never be free. Bob. Bob, please. Didn't you see those musicians out there? Come on. Todd. Lefty. It was Lefty. And the boss. The bonds. They're in my pocket. Get them quick. I thought you'd be needing them about now. Tell Lois you told me to get them, will you? I think she'd like that better. Gee, pal. I'm doing you a dirty trick. I'm walking out on you. Here they come. What's going on? What's the matter with Todd? This poor fella. He's been murdered. Now, what dirty rat could have done that? Call the police, will you? John Barton, have you any legal reason to present at this time why judgment should not be pronounced against you? <laughs> Having been duly tried and convicted of the crime of embezzlement, the judgment of... Hey. Huh? That's all right. Look, what is the meaning of Here are the bonds, and those are the men that took them. If the court please, I have no evidence in this case which I wish to present immediately. The court will defer sentence until tomorrow. In the meantime, it will consider the new evidence. I wanted to show you the view. It's lovely, isn't it? Lovely. 